from First Arena in the southern tier of New York, the city of Elmira. I'm Chris Lynch for what promises to be a very special evening between the Danbury Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth as they kick off their chase for the Commissioner's Cup. Danbury, the first place team in the FBHL, 44 wins, a franchise record. They look to try and claim their first ever Commissioner's Cup, the first in Danbury's history since 2013, when the Danbury Whalers claimed the cup. I had the opportunity to speak with Billy McCreary. I'm Chris Lynch. I had the chance to speak with Billy before we came up on the road to Elmira. Let's have a look at what the head coach and general manager of the Danbury Hattricks had to say about his team, his unit's performance, and the expectations for the playoffs. Game one of the 2023 Commissioner's Cup postseason is just around the corner, and I'm here with the head coach and general manager of the Danbury Hat Tricks, Billy McCurry. And Billy, first, a warm congratulations on an incredible regular season. Just wanted to get your thoughts and reactions as the regular season has now come to its conclusion. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a great, uh, great season for us, and, you know, I don't know if you can really draw it up any better than it went. Um, so, you know, we're pleased with where we are right now, but. You know, the regular season is just a warm up for the real season and, and that's where we are now. So, you know, it's behind us here. We've got to turn our attention, uh, turn our attention forward to, to Elmira this weekend. And, you know, I know the boys have uh, been waiting for this for a long time, so they're excited and ready to go. And among the guys who took a big step as far as their performances across the year and will be expected to make another big jump in, in their performance at the head of that table has been Brian Wilson all season who set the Fed's record for most wins in a season by Golden. What were the jumps that he made and the adjustments that he made from last season to this year? And then what are you expecting and what what's the word to him for specifically specifically for him on his goaltending side of things heading yeah. into the playoffs? I think with Willie it went back to last year and you know he had a he had a good rookie season for us, but you know he, he wanted more and, and we wanted to help him achieve that and you know we really believe in who he is as a person, as an athlete and you know, to his credit, he, he put the work in over the off season. You know, he's really focused on elevating his game, um, you know, mentally and, and physically. And it's really showed here this year. He's been the backbone for us. He's been stoic back there. Um, you know, and, and we're a team where, you know, listen, we get a little passionate at times, a little over passion, a little over emotional. And, you know, Willie's always been there to bail us out. So, um, you know, we're going to really rely on him throughout the, the next few weeks. and. Um, you know, it's, it's been a great season for him. It's been a great season for us, and we just want to keep that going here for the next month. And in front of them, on the forward side of things, you settled into a top line that's really grown some real chemistry together in Gordy and Johnny, who've been together and playing together for a good long while now. And Daniel McKittrick gets that opposite spot. What went into trying to figure out uh, that spot? Because it's a natural pairing to have Johnny and Gordy together. What goes into that process for trying to fill out that other spot on that on that top line? Yeah, well, you know, Johnny's so offensively dynamic, and, and Gordy is, you know, Mr. Reliable all over the ice. He's just a complete 200 foot player and you know unfortunately you don't see the, you don't see those guys uh, names on awards on individual awards but um, you know he does everything for us you know he can he can win draws he blocks shots he's a power play guy a PK guy five on five stall award he can chip in offensively and, and drive our top line um, you know so he's really the glue on that line and then you know Tricky is a guy that brings a ton of speed a ton of skill he's a natural competitor um, and he sees the game very similar to those guys he's got an offensive mind and you know he competes all over the ice so you know that three those three have kind of just naturally come together here for us and it's been a great trio and the rookie We'll hear more from head coach Billy McCreary during the intermission to during the media timeouts. We get the opportunity to hear more of his thoughts on his team. The Hat Tricks, well, they were in the postseason last year, had a good run, got through the Binghamton Black Bears as the Hat Tricks are taking the ice right now. Lost in their first game, won the next two at home. The second, of course, dramatic overtime victory that got them one step closer, fell to the Columbus River Dragons. The Mammoth, meanwhile, playing in their first ever postseason, though postseason hockey is not new to this building here in the southern tier of New York State. The Mammoth are just the newest addition of pro minor league hockey who have played here in Elmira for a very long time. The Jackals spending time in the UHA, UHL and the ECHL. And then more recently, the Enforcers playing a bunch of years in the FBHL. In fact, captain of the Hattricks, Johnny Ruiz, played for them in the 2021 season, the one year in which the Hattricks were on hiatus due to the onset of the COVID pandemic. 
These teams have played 10 times throughout the course of the season. All 10 of them came up victorious for the hat tricks. The most dramatic 5 4 overtime victory the day after Thanksgiving. Right here in this building, the hat tricks were down by three. And as Danbury looks to try and get themselves a victory, they lean on the FBHL goaltender of the year, co goaltender of the year, Brian Wilson. The most saves, the most minutes, the most shots faced among all goaltenders in the FPHL. And Johnny Ruiz, the other guy who got a league-wide award, voted the second team All-Star, following up on his Forward of the Year award from the prior season. The hat tricks, again, this is one of a busy, busy, busy night worth of playoffs across the entire FPHL. Only one other score in progress right now, or one other game that has a goal right now. Carolina up 1-0 on the Port Huron Prowlers. Binghamton is in Watertown. Motor City is in Columbus. That's the one series that has gotten underway. And of course, are these guys. We're gonna throw things down to ice level where they have the national anthem and the starting lineups for the matchup this evening. Beautiful rendition of the American National Anthem. Getting about set to drop the puck. Danbury will be rolling out. Johnny Ruiz, Gordy Vanell, Daniel McKittrick, Xavier Abdella, and Kyle Gonzalez. As recruiting battalion chief from Syracuse dropping the puck with ceremonial honors. Danbury in the road white jerseys. The goaltending matchup is as follows. Brian Wilson will be in net for the hat tricks. Thomas Proudlock will be in net for the Elmira Mammoth. And Proudlock has been a tremendous performer in net. Since coming up, he's played in 31 games, backed up a bunch of them, 5-14, 0 2 and two overtime shootout losses, a 9-11 save percentage throughout the course of his time in Elmira. Started the season off in Mississippi, and he has caused some real problems 
for these hat tricks. Put up a 52 save effort. Even in a game in which he gave up seven goals, he stopped 52 shots. Brian Wilson is his opponent. Danbury in the whites. Elmira in the purple. Nick Golo taking the draw against Johnny Ruiz. The puck is dropped. We're underway from First Arena here in Elmira, New York. The chase for the Commissioner's Cup has commenced. Xavier Abdella will throw his check directly on it. Trying to work this up to the point. Skitters around. Gonzalez. Puck knuckles off of him. Soilis tried to throw it up. Bounces at the circle. Loose puck still. Golo will work it up to the point. Winds up. Wants the blast. Fakes it. Sends it over to the right. Looks for it across and doesn't have any kind of room. Puck will spring free. Three on two for the hat tricks. McKittrick dropped for Bennell. Bennell turns, fires it. Kick save. McKittrick tried to get the bouncing puck in. And the first shift for the hat tricks gets a quick little shot on goal. And a quick setup. Glides in, shot. Ryan Wilson makes his first stop of the evening. 40 seconds in. Each team has gotten a play at their offensive end. Blown out to Zach Pamaleon, who takes one of the defense spots for the hat tricks. Pamaleon, his D partner is Johnny Mc McDonald. Jared Yao and Riley Robertson take the remaining defense pairing as Robertson will back in this one. Robertson, a part of the Watertown Wolves last year, who won the Commissioner's Cup as Brian Wilson will put that shot directly in his mitt. There's a good contingent of Hattricks fans who made the trip from Western Connecticut all the way out here to Elmira, just a little bit north of the Pennsylvania border. Luke Richards will take the draw against Dmitry Kuznetsov. Guys were teammates, draw up, shot, and they score the Elmira Mammoth have notched the first goal of the postseason. A minute and nine seconds into the game. They glide it through. A beautiful look. Sanchez gets this shot through. A clean face-off win and then a good finisher. Not the way you want to start off if you are the hat tricks. You have to dig yourselves out of a hole right now. Richards won the faceoff, so he'll get an assist on that goal. Richards on a line with Tristan Mock, who's on his left. Richards steps out, wins the draw, and funnels it back into his own defensive end. And the hat tricks have some work to do. Sanchez the goal, the team's first of the postseason, as this is going to turn into an icing uh, against the Mammoth. The 109 in. Sanchez, who played in nine games in the regular season, piled up four goals and four assists. A breath of fresh air for an Elmira offense that struggled early on in the season. This team gave the hat trick some real problems in the last regular season series of the season as Pamela Leon will work this low for Michael Marchesson. The top performing rookies in the whole fed. Marchesson tied up, puck free. We have a man down, still down behind the play. Eric Oganejov is still down. They have not stopped the play. The whistle now stops. Oganejov still down. Well behind the play. So the athletic trainer is going to come on to attend to him and make sure that he is okay. Ganeshov has split the season between three spots. Binghamton, then Delaware for the bulk of it. They piled up 11 points for a Thunder team from the blue line. And then joined the Mammoth for the final five games of the season. So the hat tricks, A, down a goal. B, about to be down a player. Be going into the penalty box. Oganejov gets to his feet. He'll head his way off. Actually, no, he's going to stay on. He'll head back to the bench and see if he can give it a go. Remember, these are the playoffs. And this has a very real chance of being the last home game of the season for the Elmira Mammoth. Games two and three, if necessary, of this series will be in Danbury on Saturday and Sunday. 
A minute and 44 into proceedings. Sheehan will take the draw and against Dalton Anderson. Anderson will win it. Mammoth having a good time winning the faceoffs to start things off. Hard hit thrown, Ojik goes down. Puck is loose and rolled out to the red line. Ojik will just pick up and grab his stick and go right back to work. Dmitry Kuznetsov slaloms through some traffic, whacked out at the red line and regained by the Mammoth. Kuznetsov will break it up, fly it off the boards and carry it up himself, up the wing. Kuznetsov across, Ojik the shot, proud lock with the stop. Puck bounces away from Ojik. Campbell will hold it and walk it around the line. Drops it to Ford. McKittrick off the bench, trying to pick his pocket. Nearly does. Knocked down by Ruiz. McKittrick on top of it as well. And Ford finally will get on top of it and carry it out. McKittrick still causing some problems. Campbell will look for the outlet. Tries to fly it out. Ruiz catches, knocks it down. Ruiz shields it, glides in. Backhand shot a little too high. Robertson will come over and play it low for Bennell. Bunnell will leave it low for McKittrick in Gretzky's office. McKittrick looking, looking to set up a play. He'll go up to the point. Jared Yao led the team in assists. Robertson wanted to hand off for Yao, and he wasn't there for it. He had pinched up. Puck flung on by the Mammoth. Robertson, a little bit of a mystery. He stays on just to settle this. Hands off for Lucas Benedet. Pass tipped. Benedet will still get to it. This line has been a real source of offense. Benedet tried to throw on a bank shot. Puck is still loose. Jacob Radcliffe will carry it out. Up to the point for Gonzalez. Point shot, crowd locked with the stick save and throws his glove on top of it. Hattricks are out shooting the Mammoth three to two. Elmira has the goal advantage, one nothing in the early stages of the game today. Richards, by the way, got the assist. His 25th of the season split between time with the hat tricks and the Mammoth this season. Benedet wins the draw. Marcia's on. Look for it up top. Shot save made. Great pass to Radcliffe and a better save by Proudlock. Soilus will get through Abdella. Gonzalez on the low spot. Marcia's on will work it along the boards. Thrown up to the line. Radcliffe will glide over and flung deep. My Oganezhov is back into play. Good to see him up and moving and play it. Pass up the wing to Benedet with a lot of space. He'll glide it. Over the red line, goes down. That tricks. And he'll just get their line change. Ojik with the hit away from the play again on Oganezhov. Bouncing puck. Wilson will stick it away to the corner. Tristan Mock draws the check from Pamela on. Richards will glide it in front, shot, kicked off the side of the goal. Falanga, try and work it forward. Falanga lost it, puck worked on. Wilson will knock it down with his stick. Pamaleon settles it and looks for the outlet. Has Sheehan up the wing. Sheehan has spent time in the SPHL in Pensacola. Back down here, out in front, bouncing high off the glass. Ojik will settle it, lobbed over the goal. Robertson settles it. Looks it through, hard check thrown. Ojik, leave the puck through. Jensen will fly it. Yao will grab it and work. Fans on the pass as backup in the form of Kyle Gonzalez. The kid trick pokes it to Sheehan, up for Bennell. Bennell with Sheehan, bit of a busted line. Sheehan will stay on for a bit. The kit trick can't keep it. It's an offsides play, so the hat tricks just have to regroup. Xavier Abdella to the attack. Abdella glides on. Shot save made by Proudlock. Puck sits against the apron of the goal. Bennell took a whack at it. Bennell will play it at the circle. Tried to throw it up to his friend and partner in crime, Johnny Ruiz. And the puck sneaks underneath Ruiz's stick. Gonzalez. The guy who wears a letter on this team will glide it forward. Gonzalez. Up through the stick check. Gonzalez wanted the wraparound, didn't have the angle for it. Pamela on, will put it on, wanted the tip by Bennell, it went a little bit wide. McKittrick turns, wanted to fire it, knocked down by Bennell. McKittrick will step into open space, flip through. Ford, the nearest guy to play it. He'll knock it down for Noah Wild. We'll play it up to neutralize for Soilus. Whacked at by McDonald, grabbed on, dropped it. 
Glides it, shot, save made, handcuffing Wilson. The puck got behind the net. Second chance, Wilson with a blocker down. Ruiz got his stick lifted. He'll drop it here, tried to throw it in front and covered up by Brian Wilson. That'll take us to our first media timeout. Quick pause back in a moment from First Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at that center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Word of thanks from our friends at Clancy Moving and Relocation. Moving is stressful, just like playoff hockey, but it doesn't have to be, unlike playoff hockey. Call Clancy and let them do the heavy lifting, residential and commercial, plus other services, including storage. Remember, Clancy is fancy. One goal so far in this game, it belongs to the Elmira Mammoth. Sanchez doing the honors on that. Wilson will go back into his net, shots about even, and actually slightly favoring Elmira, 5-4. Richards will hop on and take the draw against De Benedet. Mammoth fans into it. They're happy to have a team back after the enforcers went out of business. Up to the top, Ford with the shot, blocked the side of the wall. Sanchez will handle it, drop for Richards. Throws it in front, wants the tip, that goes behind the net. Mock will ring it around, another former hat trick. Marsh is on the long pass ahead. This is textbook icing and whistled as such. Six forty. the time gone by here in the first period. Danbury and Elmira faced off against each other 10 times throughout the course of the season. Wild to work it. Robertson on it as well to Benedet. Behind the net for Radcliffe. Takes the check. Yao on it as well. De Benedet tries to get this up. Yao up for Marchesson. He'll play it and settle it. Marchesson glides in. Shot. Save made. Crowdlock will just put it away in his mitt. And the Hattricks will get a line change. They'll go with the Sheehan line. And it's Sheehan centering Dmitry Kuznetsov. And Tobias Ojek. Gonzalez and Abdella staying out there. Abdella since coming back from the SPHL has looked more offensive but hasn't been rewarded yet as puck is now dropped. Abdella settles it at the point. Low for Sheehan. Chris Marate tries to take it away from him. Loose puck. Kuznetsov. Sticked and handled. Bounces to the top of the circle. Where is it? It sneaks away from Ojek. Johnson can't go anywhere with it. Sheehan can grab it and leave it. Ojik up the wing through the Elmira bench. Hits the official and knocks him down. No penalty for that. Just applause. Hard hit by McGuire on Ojik. He'll throw it up to Sheehan at the point who shoots it and sails a little too high. Gonzalez will settle it. Sanchez will knock it high and Pamela Leon will settle it in neutral territory. Up for Ojik who's already been the Receiver of a couple of hard and punishing hits. He throws it off sides. They say Sheehan a little too quick, getting across the line. Neutral zone faceoff. Danbury will throw the top line. Gordy, Johnny, and McKittrick. Kittrick came in the midseason in a trade from Mississippi. Has been a wonderful performer. Ruiz keeps his balance, gains the blue line. Ruiz gets taken down. No penalty whistled for here. Matrix will just keep skating. Ruiz dips it for McKittrick. He'll sweep through. Bunnell lost his balance. Mc Ruiz through. Richards flung through. They're going to say J-Mac got a piece of it. So no icing here. Pamela Leon will come away with it. Pamela Leon 
work his way free. Drops the pass for De Benedet. Lucas De Benedet gains it, cuts it to the middle, drops it for Marchesson. His shot tipped upstairs and into the stands just behind Proudlock's goal. Where a number of the Hat Tricks fans are settled, have their bells. Worth noting also that the Hat Tricks have now hung a bell in section 108 in honor of recently deceased Melanie Frankel. The bell actually reads, in loving memory of Melanie Frankel. That hangs in section 108 as the hat tricks come on to the ice. Well, fans will be able to hear it for the first time tomorrow. 7 p.m. puck drop. You'll be able to see this game on this broadcast outfit right here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. And we thank you for tuning in and spending your Friday night opening up the playoffs with us. Marcia Son to Benedette gets chucked. Elmira has come out in a hard-hitting, aggressive mode to start this game. Marcia Son gets hit away from the play. Danbury Bench not too happy with all of that, but understanding what they're going to see. Knocked down. Gathered in game. Dropped. Radcliffe the shot. He sailed a little bit too high trying to pick the corner. Abdella tried to knock it down and did. Puck still in the attacking end. De Benedet. Kuznetsov will play it across for Gonzalez. Settles it at the circle. Hands off for Ojik. Loose puck. Kuznetsov will keep it in. Gonzalez tried to glove it down. He will play it, not without some serious effort. Tipped by Ojik. It just trickles wide. Kuznetsov will play it up to Gonzalez. Can't control the wicked pass. They'll have to regroup. Oh, Sanchez nearly had a break. The puck bounced away from him. Sanchez throws his check on Abdella. Gonzalez grabs it, works up for Kuznetsov, and some room for it. Loaded up to the red line and gained by Sheehan, who blows a tire. Mammoth will get this out to neutral space. Pamela on a cross. McDonald. His pass knocked down by Chris Marate at the blue line. Sheehan has to get back on sides. Sanchez take the check from Ojek. Over the middle for Sheehan, not there. Hat tricks will go for a line change as Richards on the prowl, gets through Bunnell. Rung on by Mock, off of Wilson's stick. Donald can't control it. Pamela on, can't go anywhere with it. Knocked down by Campbell. Turning and firing up to the right side, lobbed in. Luck will bounce, Pamela on grabs it. Vanell will settle it. Tried to bang it through. Knocked down, flown out. Ruiz will settle it with his mitt and ring it deep. Proud lock out of his net to knock it down. He'll get beyond McKittrick and Robertson will settle it down right on the red line. He just has to wait. Lo tried to lob it in. Campbell will be the guy who receives it. 8.50 left to go in the first period. What's been a pretty quickly played period of hockey between the hat tricks and Mammoth. Marchesson on it up the wing for Falanga. Loose puck, Marchesson will come back to get it. Marchesson jostling for position. Robertson wanted the handoff for Falanga. Robertson with the stick lift, keeps it on. De Benedet hands off, Marchesson top of the circle. Shot trickles through! Michael Marchesson, the first goal of the postseason for Danbury. Ties the game at one apiece. Michael Marchesson piled up 34 goals in the regular season and 24 assists for 58 points, all with the hat tricks. It just trickles through Thomas Proudlock, and that's a save that he wants back. 11.37 will be the time of that goal, and now the hat tricks have a bit more life to them. Lucas De Benedet gets the assist. And they'll go right back to looking for more. De Benedet had 17 assists in the regular season, looking for more. McKittrick the shot, save made, follow up chance, right into Proud Lock's gut. That will take us to another media timeout. Quick pause back in a moment from First Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel.
Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury is the premier automobile partner in the Danbury area. Located on Newtown Road, the Bennett family has been putting the community behind the wheel for over 35 years. Dream big. Drive a Maserati or Alfa Romeo. New and pre-owned vehicles are available. Let Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury be your choice for your beautiful new car. Of course, big thanks to them as well for being the official uniform sponsor of the Danbury Hattricks and scoreboard sponsor of the Danbury Hattricks. Gordy Bennell is going to hop out and take the face off. It's the same players on this top line for Danbury, but a different look. Normally, it's Johnny at center. Gordy hops in to take this one. McKittrick stays out there. Pamela on and McDonald. Normal guys on D, and it works out all right. Bennell wins the face off. McKittrick down low. Look to play it up to the circle. It's picked off by Tristan Mock. Now he comes, tie game. Wilson will knock it down and just put his glove right on top of it. And a little post whistle antics. Tristan Mock having some words with his former teammates. The clock is still running. They have not noticed this. Now they have. And so the officials are going to have to come back over to the to the officials box right here to make sure that that's all sorted out. Yep, they add the correct time back onto the clock. That nobody had noticed that. Most especially not the clock operators, and then they did. So 7.46 to go. Richards and Ruiz on the dot. Richards will win it. And Ruiz actually wins it. Puck bounces behind him. Hard hit by Pamela on, and that's going to be the first penalty of the game. It's going against Danbury. Uh -oh. Zach Pamela on heads off for two. So with 7.35 left to go, Zach Pamela on is going to sit for a two-minute cross-checking during the regular season. Danbury with an 82% success rate on the penalty kill. Only a few teams had a higher performance rate. Columbus and Carolina among them. Elmira, a 16.8% success rate. Only two teams, Danbury and Watertown, had worse performing power plays and also the hat tricks with 13 shorthanded goals the very most in the FPHL. The puck will come down to proud lock. The hat tricks have killed off the first 25 seconds worth of this power play. Campbell will work it up the wing for Gullo. Drops the pass behind for Campbell. Gullo the recently named captain of the Mammoth. Gullo has to go back to retreat and regroup for this. Gullo holds it. Hands off at the blue line. Up to the wing. Campbell drops off for Gullo. Patrick's trying to deny the entry. The puck will get deep. Gullo gets to it. Soilus kicks it up top. Picked off. Bouncing puck. Marchesan got hit away from the play, and it works out for the Mammoth. Handed off. Soilus fans on it. And across still on the line. Gullo to the left circle. Holds up, and they'll go to work. Works this to the right. Soilus the shot. Save made by Wilson. Just put it calmly away in his mitt. The former... Niagara Purple Eagle played Division I college hockey there and has had one of the very best seasons in the history of the FPHL. Earned co-goaltender of the year with Brendan Coolgan of the Columbus River Dragons. Recorded the most victories of any goaltender in the history of the league. Richards and Ruiz on the dot. They'll work this out. Ruiz goes down, and the Mammoth take a penalty, much to the consternation of their fans and much to the delight of the Danbury Hattricks bench. Ford heads off for two, and we'll get 44 seconds of four-on-four four skating. This is a holding call against Ford and the Mammoth. And so Proud Lock will have to spend some time defending in his own end. De Benedetto hops on. 
to take the face off. Richards getting a lot of ice time and not unreasonably so. Richards with a clean face off win. Loose puck. Gonzalez will let this go. Richards blows a tire to Benedette. Work at it. Richards holds it. Leaves it behind for Chris Marate. He'll leave it. Marate will give it off for Mock. Marate at the slot. Hands off for Campbell at the red line. Knocked down at the blue. Nearly free. Worked at by Gonzalez. De Benedette will get this out. He is getting an awful lot of time tonight as Marcia Sant throws a check. Lucas De Benedette from International Falls, Minnesota. Out of hockey for a little bit. And he needs to get back in. New Kyle Gonzalez and gets back in. Hat tricks back to full strength. They'll get a truncated power play of a minute and eight seconds. This has been one of the neat, real big concerns for the Hattricks throughout the course of the season. The second worst performing power play in the league is Ratcliffe will settle it down and work it around the boards. Ojek will leave it for Lucas De Benedette. They have 50 seconds with which to work. Bunnell into De Benedette, turns across to the circle, bounces over Sheehan's stick. Sheehan will work it through Jensen. Hit away from the play was Ojek. He has drawn a lot of punishment throughout the course of this first period. Radcliffe will leave it for McKittrick. 27 seconds worth of power play time still to go for Danbury. Golo takes the check from Ruiz and goes down in the heap. 20 seconds left, the Hattricks have their top power play unit on the ice. And here they go, McKittrick up the wing. He'll pull up at the blue line and keep going. McKittrick works around the boards, wants it for Marchesson. Got it to him. Poked out to the slot, not a hat trick there for it. Cleared by D'Angelo, and that is that. Both teams over on the power play, both with truncated power plays. Tied up at one goal apiece. Tipped by Sheehan just over the red line, so no icing. Sheehan will go in and give chase. Goes down against the boards. Puck sat under him for a moment. Soilis gets dumped by Ojek. And a clear icing call against the Mammoth. Elmira fans none too pleased. That should take us to the under five media timeout. Or no, I guess we're just gonna keep, yep. Yes, this is indeed going to be the media timeout. Just at the moment of whether or not the officials were gonna call it as such. So quick pause back in one more moment from the Dan, from on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel for First Arena here in Elmira. Amina's Alterations, Danbury's expert tailors, are located just down the road. With over 31 years of locally owned and operated experience, they are the official stitcher of the Danbury Hattricks. They mend, hem, repair, and zip it. Check them out at aminasalterations.com. Three minutes, 56 seconds left to go. Here in the first period, each team with a tally, get things going. Waiting for the officials to give the word that we can go. Golo takes the face off against Sheehan. Joshua Sanchez and Michael Marshall on the two goal scorers. Sheehan wins it. The save is, well, I guess none of that counted or none of that mattered. The officials blow the play dead. This remains one of my very least favorite things in all of hockey, the fake puck drop. So Sheehan and Gullo will have to do it again. Sheehan will win it twice. Shot save made by Proudlock, whose Netsov wound up and fired it, had a good looking shot. Proudlock corralled it. 3.52 now, the time remaining. 
Shots 10 to nine in favor of the Mammoth. Richards and mock line, seeing more ice time. Sheehan has won three space offs. Mock gets to it though. Good breakup to deny Sanchez a break. Dmitry Kuznetsov, the good back check work. Knocked down by Yao. Ojek will ring it in. Proudlock will settle it. Metrics in the middle of a partial line change. Jensen will fly this up. Robertson, settle it and back tap it to Yao. Nearly fumbled it, but got it up to the blue line. Worked in. Nelmira will swap their players. Robertson has a Commissioner's Cup ring with last year's Watertown Wolves. Up for Jared Yao. Up for Marchesan. They'll work it deep for Falanga. Proud lock out of his net. Goes through a bunch of guys and up to the red line. Gonzalez settles it. Abdella worked on for Lucas De Benedet. De Benedet with an assist on Marchesan's goal. Riley Robertson as well. Not a big scorer, but coming through when he needs to. Abdella will work it around for Gonzalez. Falanga at the red line. Denied a clean glide in. Marchesan dances through Jensen. Marchesan up to the circle. De Benedet lost it. Marchesan fanned on it. Golo to the board. He'll settle it and try and work this out. Golo will glide his way across the Mammoth logo at center ice. Holds it, works it on. Abdella, down for McDonald, a hard hit. And again, away from the play. McDonald will pick this up and leave it forward. Ruiz will grab it. Ruiz springs his way free. Ruiz, saved by Proudlock, rebound. He scores! Captain Ruiz puts his team ahead. A beautiful drive and goal with a hard finish, but one he's happy to take if it puts his team ahead. Johnny Ruiz, the all-time leading point and goal scorer in the history of the Danbury Hattricks. And the captain for the last two years puts his team ahead. Two to one with 2.06 left. And the Hattricks fans who made the trip up rewarded for their loyalty and support with a beautiful Johnny Ruiz goal. Well, Leon will work this one around for McDonald. Ojek tried to fly it for Sheehan. Sheehan will break this up. Three on two, they come. Sheehan in, drag shot, locked aside. McDonald will work this up to the point for Zach Pamaleon. Turns, fires, wants the block shot. It's knocked down by Ford. Off the glass through Schmidt. Pamaleon will settle it. Ford and Ojek tied up in, new, in deep in mammoth space. Kuznetsov has to take the puck for a walk in his own end of the rink. A beautiful goal for Johnny Ruiz at 35 goals on the season. Richards defending tightly. Up for Radcliffe, the puck will bounce over his stick and turn into an icing. The Danbury fans making a ton of noise and trying to turn first arena into the Danbury Ice Arena West. 108 to go in the first, 2-1. Hat tricks in the lead. They lead the shot counter 11 to 10. Sheehan and Richards, though even the public address announcer forced to acknowledge it. Hat tricks fans doing their job well. Radcliffe shields the puck well. Radcliffe has some room to work with. Up to De Benedet, turns, fires and scores! Lucas De Benedet puts his team up 3-1 with his second point of the game. Ojik set the screen in front. And after a funky start, the Hattricks woke up and they have taken the rhythm of the game in their control. De Benedetto hop right back out. 
Went to school with Kyle Gonzalez at Northland University. And that friendship helped to get him here. And it has paid dividends for the hat tricks. Radcliffe, he'll take on Campbell. Radcliffe handles, shoots it, save made, big rebound. Campbell will get it beyond McDonald. Wilson, his glove up in case this turns into an icing. It won't. Abdella will settle it. Up to Radcliffe. I'll try and fly this out with 15 seconds left. Marchison turns and fires and scores another one! Michael Marchison makes it 4-1 Danbury! Four unanswered goals. The hat tricks enjoying their mammoth dinner cooked wonderfully well by the hat trick offense. That's Marcia Son's second goal of the game. Twelve point five seconds left. And that trip for the Hattrick fans up here to Elmira was well worth it. Mammoth are offside, so the Hattricks will take it behind their own end, and that will do it for the first period. 4-1. Danbury in the lead. A wicked, blistering offensive outburst for the Hattricks at the end of that period. Let's quickly round up the scoring. Joshua Sanchez opened the game. 109 in, Luke Richards with the assist, a clean faceoff win. Sanchez a goal to open things up for the Mammoth. Michael Marchison got one next, Lucas Benedet and Riley Robertson with the assist. Johnny Ruiz got a goal to go in for him. 17 for 54 gone by in the first period. A beautiful drive and finish and a tough finish. Lucas De Benedet got one, assisted by Jacob Radcliffe and Tobias Ojik, and Michael Marchison got his second goal of the game. Jacob Radcliffe got his second point. Lucas De Benedet got his third point. The hat trick offense cooking and eating incredibly well. The course of the evening, Mammoth, specifically Thomas Proudlock in the defense. We'll take a breather and come back. We'll hear a few more words from head coach Billy McCurry. Nope, we'll leave that behind. So the Hat Tricks will take a breather. We'll come back in just a little bit from First Arena here in Elmira. Only the first period gone by. Still 40 more minutes of play to go here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. Quick pause, back in a moment.
first intermission here on the Danbury Hattrix YouTube channel between the Hattricks and Mammoth. I got the great opportunity to speak with Johnny Ruiz ahead of the game. Let's hear for, from the Danbury Hattrix captain about what he expects and his experiences playing playoff hockey. <laughs> Game one between the Hattricks and Mammoth this tonight. I'm here with the captain of the Hattricks, Johnny Ruiz. And Johnny, first off, congratulations on a great regular season. And how's the mood of the team heading into game one of the playoffs tonight? First off, thank you. Um, it's great right now. You know, emotions are high. We're confident. Um, we know the job ain't done. You know, regular season is one thing. This is a whole new season. So we're prepared pretty well, and uh, we're ready to battle. How much is the experience that you and Gordy and all the guys who were back from last year, and having guys like Bradley Robertson and Danny Lanesbury who've won championships at different yeah, levels. Yeah, I mean, just, how's that help you? Just talking about it, I just got goosebumps, you know. Um, the experience is one thing. Uh, for these younger guys, they'll, they'll get a taste of it. Um, just no better feeling than the playoffs, you know. Mm -hmm. Last year we had a, we were down, we were 13 seconds away from our season ending and we ra rallied back and won in overtime and then took game three. So just you gotta live in the moment. Billy preaches it all the time and it's, it's exciting stuff. So. You get to play against some former teammates and Tristan Mock and Luke Richards. What's, that? <laughs> What's that like to know that you're going to have like guys against you who know you, who you've played with, playing against you? I mean, yeah, with, with high, the hockey world's pretty small. You know, you're always going to play against guys who've played either with or against you, so they know your tendencies, you know theirs, and you know it's it's part of the game. So, you know, the maturity level and the you know, confidence you have going into that, you can you know outwork them and outsmart them. What are the challenges that the Mammoth bring to you on the ice? I mean, they, they try to capitalize on missed opportunities by us, um, transition, stuff like that. So if we play our game and stick to it, play strong, we'll be fine. Game one is at 7.35 tonight. Johnny, best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.
Second period about set to get underway between the Hat Tricks and the Elmira Mammoth. 4-1 Danbury in the lead over the Mammoth. Four goals, two of them coming in the very last minute of the opening stanza. Welcome to First Arena here at the here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. I'm Chris Lynch for what has been a hot offensive start. Danbury in the road, white jerseys going from left to right across your internet waves. Elmira in the home purples going the opposite direction. Quick look at some of the scores from around the FPHL. Carolina leading Port Huron 5-0. Having a good time on the road up in Michigan. Binghamton leads Watertown 2-1. Columbus, who already opened up their postseason series on Wednesday, leads Motor City 5-0. So the River Dragons are getting pretty close to being the first team in the FPHL to advance into the division final. And of course, this score 4-1 in favor of the visitors. Johnny Ruiz will be taking the draw for the Hattricks. Alton Anderson on, is his opponent. The Hattricks win it. The puck is dropped. We're underway from first arena as McKittrick tried to deny the icing. And we get a pause in the game seven seconds in. It's an icing call against the hat trick, so we'll have to come back into Danbury defensive ice. Sanchez, the lone goal scorer for Elmira. Anderson will hop on the dot. Louise will take it. The whistle sounds. Ruiz will win this one. On the draw away from McGuire. Pamela on up the wing. He'll fling it across. McDonald off the boards. He'll put it forward. Sits in the corner and bounces around. Elmira has made a goaltending change. It looks like Thomas Proudlock not back in net. Harley White takes over in net for the Mammoth. White, five wins, seven losses in regulation, three overtime shootout losses. 885 save percentage for Harley White this season. So Thomas Proudlock faces 14 shots in his outing. Would be unsurprised to see him back in net tomorrow night. Sanchez will gather and run it across the blue line. Gets to the circle, looks for some room. Shot on, saved by Wilson. Marcia Son will handle it and try to work it for DeBenedet. Richards takes the check, gets crunched by Marchesson. Mock down there as well, up to the point. Shot into Wilson's glove. A clean save made. And we get another stoppage and play a minute and 18 in. De Benedet will hop on the dot. And win it from Richards to Benedetta. a good night already. Three points, a goal and two assists. Marsha Son will spin and work this out. Benedet will hold it, gave it on for Radcliffe. And his two assists of his own. That line of De Benedet, Radcliffe, and Marsha Son has been brilliant. Play out in front. Marsha Son couldn't quite control it on his backhand. So the Hattricks have to regroup. Abdella will pitchfork this deep. Tried to get his own pass. Interrupted. Ojek overran the puck. Mammoth will work it up the wing. Flown in, knocked down. Mock in tight. Wilson will knock it away. Yao jostling with Gullo. Sheehan will grab it and run. Flip it off the boards and out for Ojek. Up the wing comes Tobias Ojek. He'll shoot it. And White with a nifty glove hand save. Harley White facing some good pressure and already has come up with a couple of very good and tight saves. Two minutes, 10 seconds gone by here in the second period. Sheehan on the dot. 
Whacked up by Ojek behind the net. He'll go and chase his own wide shot. Leaves it low. Ford, the first guy on it. Sheehan tried to pick his pocket. Mammoth will get their way out. Jelenskis left it, shot. Wilson with the blocker, save. Up for Ojik, in. Tobias Ojik dangles through, stopped by Harley White. He will look to pass it, he'll play it up to the wing. Knocked down by Kuznetsov, and Pamelayon will play it. Pamelayon will work it up to Tobias Ojik. Across the blue line, Ojik left it for Sheehan. Sheehan shot, knocked down, loose puck. Belanga is the net mine, mine screener, and a save made by Harley White. Danbury creating an awful lot of pressure and unwilling to let Harley White have an easy time of it. Game two of the series will be in Danbury. Tomorrow, 7 p.m. puck drop at the Danbury Ice Arena. Patrick's aimed to head home with a 1-0 series advantage. Reeves will work this up for Pamela Leon. Got it at the point, floats it into the corner. Palanga can't control it. Bounces across to the red line for Robertson. Had an assist on the first hat trick goal. Beyond Palanga. Worked through hard, hit Gordy Bennell. Knocked down Bennell and work it on for Ruiz. Lost it behind the net. Bennell up top, no room for it. At the circle and carried out. At the circle, chance for the Mammoth. Shot a little bit wide. Great idea for Tom for McGuire and couldn't quite finish it off. At the red line and rung round the boards and that will sound for the whistle. Xavier Abdella, the nearest man to it. Head coach Billy McCreary, a little more willing to swap his players on and off and keep them rested, keep them working. De Benedet will hop on the dot. Clean face-off win. Xavier Abdella will work it low for Marsha Son. Radcliffe holds his ground. White with the stop. Jelenskis will carry this out. Across the red line, got it through McDonald. Jelenskis will go and chase it. Pulls up, Abdella tries to staple him into the boards. Four players engage in the board battle. De Benedet working at it as well now. Five players there. Puck's still not free. McDonald takes a check. Puck still sits in that corner, only now springs free. Marsha San. Fans on the initial pass. De Benedet will grab it and run with it. De Benedet will leave it at the circle. Marchison tries to olay his man. He would have been checker Jim Jensen. 4 1 the score in favor of the Danbury Hat Tricks. Robertson will chip it for Sheehan. Ojik there for it as well. Ojik up and tipped. Kuznetsov tries to get under his man, rings this one around the boards. Shoulder going up, on comes Richards, he'll fly it in. Wilson will knock it down. Yao with his check on Mock. Puck will bounce up to Ojik. He's been the recipient of a number of punishing hits. Drop for Sheehan, Ojik will regain. White will shunt it aside. Kuznetsov tried to go for it. Kuznetsov spins. Puck sits against the wall. Now finally carried out Noah Wild. There's an A. Got the pass through Pamelayon, but he got it tipped on it. Took it away from Sanchez, the lone goal scorer for the Mammoth so far tonight. Lipped on from a kit trick. Went out the circle and worked around to the right side. Holds it and works. Bounces through and knocked down. Pamela on. Will hold it and glide it. Long pass ahead, knocked down. Ford. Ruiz tried to pick his pocket. White with the pass. He's very active with his stick. Now 
Emelian will take this away. McKittrick will glide this out. McKittrick flies this on. Xavier Abdella will knock it down. Gordy Benell took the check and went down hard. Lucas DeBenedet still on attack mode. DeBenedet blows a tire. White with an active stick to jar it free, and the Mammoth will gather it. Long sequence of play without a whistle. McDonald tried to work it into the wall. McGuire rung around the corner. McGuire holds it, handed off and taken by McDonald. Up for Marchesson. He's got a 2 on 0. Marchesson off to Radcliffe, who scores it. Jacob Radcliffe off a feed set up by Marchesson. Makes it 5 1. And the Danbury Hattricks enjoying themselves here in Elmira. Three points each for Marchesson and Radcliffe. It's Marchesson's first assist of the night. And it's Radcliffe's first goal of the night. 13-11 left to go in the second. Radcliffe will work this deep. Shots are 19-14 in favor of Danbury. Had a moment to wake up when the Mammoth got their first goal a minute and change in. And then after that, hat tricks have been on fire. Jelenskis the shot, and Wilson will calmly put that away in his glove. That'll take us to the first media timeout of the period. Brief pause back in a moment from First Arena here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. food and fun we'll go check out JJ stacks in Brookfield where they feature burgers wings shakes ice cream and mini golf it's getting nice warm and beautiful up here in the northeastern United States uh, go check out their menu and spoil yourself take a trip down Federal Road and stack it 1251 the time left to go here in the second period Danbury in command 5-1 the score over the mammoth Brian Wilson coming back from the bench Sheehan will be taking the draw against the relatively recently minted captain, Nick Gullo. Sheehan and Gullo waiting for the officials to give them the okay to go ahead. The officials talking to Tobias Ojuk. He can finally go ahead and play some hockey. Face-off won by Golo, wound up for the shot. Wilson with the save, and he'll put it away in his mitt. And clean a nice blast on net by Nathan Campbell. A lot of these guys on the Mammoth have started off in different places and have come to the southern tier of New York as the season has gone along. Campbell being one of them. Ojik trying to get his way out. Takes a check. Sheehan. Got it across the blue line. Campbell started off his season in Carolina, came here relatively early on. He's played 31 games, a member of the Mama. McDonald looking for the outlet, got it through. Sheehan across the blue line, walks in, shot, save made, bouncing puck, and he'll get the cover on it before Falanga can knock home the loose puck on the rebound. 5-1 the margin in favor of the hat tricks. A happy, happy night worth of scoring. In particular, for that third line of the hat tricks, three points all the way around for DeBenedet, Radcliffe, and Marchesson. They have been powering this unit. Ruiz has a goal of his own. It's an unassisted goal. A beautiful effort that gave the hat tricks the lead. Mock will run in. It's crunched by Tristan Mock. Gordy Benell will work it up to Ruiz, but Kittrick with him. Hands off, we have a penalty away from the play. Riley Robertson is gonna head off 
And Riley Robertson not happy with the officials on this, but for the second time in the game, the hat tricks will be shorthanded. It's a holding penalty against Robertson. A very large man from Ontario. Elmira 0 for 1 on the power play to this point. Not that many penalties between these two teams. In fact, only the two. A boarding minor for Zach Pamaleon and a holding minor for Stephen Ford. Otherwise, this has been a pretty straightforward game. Ruiz with the clear. The Ford penalty canceled out an awful lot of power play time still left for the Mammoth. Elmira needs to get themselves on the board with this power play to have a chance to cut into this. Louise will hold it, glide on, fly it off the glass. We have 11.30 left to go in the second period. Marsh is on the check on Campbell. Abdella with the clear. Eleven fifteen. the time remaining. 110 left on that power play. 11.05, the time remaining. Jelenskis can't control the long pass. Jared Yao will go and get the puck. Fly it off the glass and all the way down to Elmira territory. White out of his crease, settles it behind his goal. Richards will grab it and run. Sheehan flew in to knock it free. This is going to be, what do we have? This is a penalty going against Richards. Thought for a second it was gonna be against the Hattricks, but no, it's a slashing minor against Luke Richards. So for the second time today, the Mammoth have killed their own power play opportunities. And they're taking one of their own. Sheehan will hop on the dot and take the face off. We have 40 seconds worth of four on four play with 10.42 left to go. Yao will knock this down and regain the blue line. Yao across for Sheehan. Low for Falanga, it's a little bit beyond him. Yao will hold it. Yao at the circle, drops it for Sheehan. Try to drag it. Chance for the Mammoth. Tristan Mock glides in, shot wide of Wilson. Got a piece of it. Falanga controls it. Hands off for Sheehan. Lost it. Tried to play it behind him. Falanga cut to the wrong spot. Ford shot blocked down by his numerical counterpart, Jared Yao. Robertson out of the box. Sheehan glides in. Sheehan the shot, knocked down. Sits at the circle and glides its way up for Gullo. Under Radcliffe's arm, Wilson will settle it. Pamela on. Hands off for McKittrick. Pass forward for Marchesson. The Hattricks have an abbreviated power play again. Ruiz turns it, wants to fire it. It's knocked too high and off the glass behind the goal. Marchesson will work it up to the boards. Pamela on. Tries to hand it off. Threw it up top. Ruiz there for it. He'll settle it down and go to work. McKittrick up to Radcliffe. McKittrick at the circle. That's low. Looks it up top. Pamela on the shot. Blocked down. Bouncing puck. Race for it. It's won by Dalton Anderson. Radcliffe back in defense. Turns. Fires. Shot high and off the glass. Ruiz will handle it. That's a good shorthanded look. Two on two. They come with Anderson the trailer. Ruiz will whack this deep. Ten seconds left to go. Wilson will settle it behind his net. Hands off for Yao, the hat tricks, and Mammoth. 0 for 2 on the power play, both with abbreviated power play chances. Ojik shot a little bit wide to the right of Harley White's goal. Both teams back to even strength now. Kuznetsov slaloms in his own end. 
up for Sheehan. Sheehan turns, circles, looks, wanted the tip. Kuznetsov the chance and couldn't pay it off. 5-1 Danbury as we have 8.15 left to go. Chance for Golo. Falling was Yao to glide across, try and block it. The shot sailed a little high. Sheehan with the check up to the circle. Marate, the shot saved by Wilson. Yao will knock it down and carry this out. Hands off for Ojik. Eight minutes left to go in the second. Hat tricks with a goal in the frame. Save made. White will cover it. And we get a hit after the play as Ojik got into it with Golo. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that results in a penalty against Ojik. We'll have to wait to see how that. Yep, they are ushering Tobias Ojik to his seat in the penalty box. We'll take a quick breather. Come back in a moment from First Arena here in Elmira. You're in the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Reverie Brewing Company is now a featured beverage in the Danbury Ice Arena. Grab a Reverie and don't quit your daydream. When you drink Reverie, anything is possible. All of you Hattrix fans who have decided to spend your evening with us, we hope you're enjoying it. We hope you are enjoying the effort that the Danbury Hattricks are putting on. 7.55 left to go here in the second. The Hattricks have the lead over the Elmira Mammoth. They're playing a video for the United States Army, the recruiting base not too far by. And actually during the intermission, the Elmira Mammoth announced and hosted a really, really nice and wonderful ceremony in which new Army recruits were sworn in as new mission members of the United States Army. So congratulations to those brave souls who decided to take on one of the greatest duties of our country. So. Thank you to those fine people taking up that fine and very good undertaking. De Benedette and Richards will hop on the dot. De Benedette with a clean faceoff when he's had a very, very good game. Three points for the Minnesota native. Tristan Mock will grab it in his own end. The hat tricks are once again shorthanded. Tobias Ojik. Took a penalty during the intermission, or right before the, uh, the break. 7.30 is the time remaining. Puck sits in the official's skate. De Benedette will glide in at the circle. De Benedette goes down. No whistle sounded here. Up the wing. 1.20 the time remaining. Across the red line, worked in. Brian Wilson settles it behind his net and rings this one around. Gordy Bunnell can't control it. Minute and five left, puck free underneath Ruiz. Mammoth can't keep it in the attacking end, so Richards will settle and regroup. Richards will glide through. Rung around the boards, up to Ford at the point. D'Angelo turns. Sanchez, grab it and hold it. Campbell, worked on, puck free. Ruiz will take this out. Gordy Bunnell glides in. Bunnell for Ruiz, save made by White, and he covers it. A brilliant shorthanded chance for the hat tricks. Led the league in shorthanded goals. And it takes a brilliant effort by Harley White to stop it from turning into a 6-1 game. Thirty-one seconds left to go on Ojik's penalty. Face off in Elmira's defensive end. Coming up on six minutes left to go in the second. Mammoth up the wing. Abdella glides in, puck free. We've got a whistle sounding. Another penalty going against Danbury. It'll be an interference call. Kyle Gonzalez 
is going to head off and we'll have 15 seconds worth of a five on three power play for the Mammoth. Extended special teams time. And who do the Hattricks choose to defend? It'll be McKittrick, the lone forward. Robertson and Yao will hop on the ice. Golo Campbell, Soilis Jelenskis, and Anderson doing the work for the Mammoth. They don't have long on the five on three, so they get to work underneath Campbell's stick. Campbell hands it off to the corner. Campbell at the top, winds up, fakes the blast. Campbell works, shot, punched out. Campbell will gather to neutralize. The hat tricks have killed off the remainder of Ojik's penalty. Gonzalez has another minute and 40 of jail time. Unless the Mammoth score and let him out early. Hattrix hoping he serves the full time. Up 5-1 and looking to keep it that way. Wrong through. Anderson up top. Tipped by McKittrick. Yao dives for it. Gets on the loose puck and plays it across the red line. Ojik defending against Campbell is having a hard time finding his way free. He'll head off. A long penalty kill shift for Tobias Ojik. He's played a very physical game so far tonight. Marshasan will work it free. De Benedet will glide in at the circle. Turns, fires White with the stop and covers up the puck. Five oh two. The time remaining here in the second. 52 seconds worth of penalty time left to go for Danbury. Lucas DiBenedet will hop on the dot and take it. Shots are 23-16 in Danbury's favor. Patrick's win the draw. They play it out to neutral ice. Tristan Mock will gather it in his own slot and regroup it. Mock leaves it for Ford. Ford up the wing for Richards. Can't get it out. De Benedette with the takeaway. Goes down, but more good penalty kill time for the hat tricks. Up the wing. Over the middle. Marcia Sonald pinball this out. Ford will settle it at the blue line. And the remaining time on Gonzalez's penalty will burn off. The hat tricks have been perfect on the penalty kill so far tonight. Elmira having a hard time generating anything. Gonzalez gets back into the play. Actually playing with three defensemen right now. Kittrick with the hit. Myra will settle it. Gonzalez has finally hopped off, so Danbury gets their usual three forwards up there. To the blue line. It's chucked. Abdella takes Mock with him. Schmidt gets worked by McDonald. Bennell on the loose puck. Ruiz hands off for Bennell. McKittrick glides in. Ruiz alone at the circle. Ruiz, oh, just shoots it over the crossbar. And back come the Mammoth. 3.25 left, Elmira trying to get themselves cut down from a 5-1 deficit. Can't get it cleanly on net. Oganejov up to Anderson at the circle. Turns, wants to fire, can't get it cleanly. Schmidt turns, fires wide of Wilson. Bunnell takes the punishment from Schmidt. McGuire throws it across the crease. Xavier Abdella will get to the loose puck. Three minutes left to go in the second period. In, and again, what's been a pretty quickly played game, all things considered. Kuznetsov couldn't control it. Sheehan does. Malanga turns and fires. Save made by White. Mammoth will get the release. Floated over the middle. Yao will grab it and run. Jared Yao pass forward for Sheehan. Falanga controls the loose puck, worked off his stick. Long sequence of play coming towards the end of the second period, still with one more media timeout to go. Hard check thrown against Oganejov, who took a hit early on in the game. Pamaleon uses the net as his shield. Up for Yao, his D partner. From behind, Jelenskis picks it off. Marcia Son glides, falls down. 
We'll come up to the two minute time remaining. No icing here. I'll say Yao got a piece of it. Pamelaon will settle it behind his net. Works it up the wing. Marsha Song calls for the pass. De Benedette glides in at the blue line. Pamelaon fly it in. Puck flutters and Harley White will just have his mitt on top of and covering the puck. That'll take us to the third and final media timeout of the frame. Quick pause back in a moment from First Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Waste and Recycling has the roots in the community for all of your needs. Residential and commercial, Oak Ridge is the official sanitation partner of the Danbury Hattricks. One minute, 41 seconds. Actually, a pretty late media timeout. 5-1, the margin in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. They have had a wonderful time of it. Two goals late in the first period. In the last minute, actually. Shots are 24-16 in favor of the Hattricks. Brian Wilson has stopped 15 of 16. Ali White took over in net for Elmira. Thomas Proudlock started the game. I would be unsurprised if Proudlock goes back in the net tomorrow night. These teams will meet again for game two of the opening round series. Mock at the circle shot, stick save by Wilson. That'll go up into the protective netting over his left shoulder. With a minute and 30 left to go in the second. De Benedette will hop on the dot. Goes against Richards. Richards a clean win. Abdella will come away with it on the follow-up. Puck loose, Richards wins it away from Abdella who goes down. Puck goes wide, Mock couldn't get a play on it. De Benedette glides in, gets his way free, shoots it, save made, Puck is loose, where is it? It's actually behind White, up to Yao at the top of the circle. Glides hands off for Radcliffe. Tries to ring it low. Radcliffe, one of three hat tricks with three points. Really can name the three stars being Marchison. At this point, Marchison, Radcliffe, and De Benedette, who have been wonderful. De Benedette off for Rich for Marchison. Wow. Up top, Radcliffe the shot. White with the save. And he'll put it away in his gut. 40.2 seconds left to go in the second period. 5-1 the margin in favor of the Hattricks. Four of those goals came in the first. Radcliffe got a goal in the second period and now here we are. Louise on the faceoff circle. Wins the draw to Pamela on. Worked low, McKittrick dives in. It's a nice pass from Benell, but White snuffs it out. Now once time was going quickly, now it's going quite slowly. Ruiz wins the faceoff, tries to go ahead. Puck sits against the wall and out comes Anderson, flies this in. Amelion gets under Jelenskis. McKittrick with the check. McKittrick will work this around for McDonald. Johnny McDonald. McKittrick forward. Kittrick at the circle, pulls up, turns, fires, shot a little bit wide, White got a piece of it. Final seconds will burn off the clock and that is that. The Danbury Hattricks, a commanding 5-1 advantage. 
As we take the turn into the second intermission. One goal in the second, it belongs to Jacob Radcliffe, the Canterbury, New Zealand native. Scored 6.49 into the second period. Marcia Son and Johnny McDonald actually getting the assists on that goal. And Brian Wilson stops everything he sees in the frame. We'll take a breather, come back in a little bit from First Arena here in Elmira. Notes and observations during the second intermission and some scores from around the FPHL. We'll take a pause, come back in a moment from Elmira, New York.
Second intermission here at First Arena in Elmira, New York. 5-1 the advantage for the Danbury Hattricks. Welcome back in here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. I'm Chris Lynch for what's been a good time if you're a Hattricks fan and if you are a Hattricks supporter who's wanted to see them score some goals, they definitely have. Michael Marsh is on especially three points, two goals and an assist, setting up Jacob Radcliffe for the only goal in the second period. I got the chance to speak with him ahead of today's matchup. Let's hear what he had to say ahead of his first FBHL playoff game. We're here with Michael Marchesson ahead of game one of the Commissioner's Cup playoffs. And Mike, first off, congratulations on a fabulous regular season. Thank you. Just want to ask, you're welcome. Just wanted to ask how you're feeling and how the team's feeling before we start the postseason tonight. Uh, pumped. I think the energy is up right now. We're ready to get rolling. We've been waiting for this for like a month or two, just getting ready for playoffs, ramping everything up, and it's finally here. And you piled up the last time that we took the ice against these guys. You put up a four-goal game, one of only three guys in the history of the team to put up four goals. What went into that game? I think with three of them coming in the third period as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's just a back and forth game and bounces were coming my way. Our line was clicking and lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting. Uh, yeah, what, do you, what would you say the challenges are that the Mammoth are going to bring to you guys on the ice? Uh, physicality. They're going to probably come hard and they don't, they don't give up. They keep coming the whole entire game. So we're going to have to be ready for that and match that and double it. And how would you say, what, what's been the message from the older guys, the guys who have been around, who have played pro hockey for a bit? What's been their message to the younger guys? Keep it simple. Don't try to do anything you're not sure of. Keep it simple. If there's not a bad play, just dumping it in, you know, just getting to work. Instead of trying to make those fancy plays, just keep it simple. Hit, be clean. Don't stay out of the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A very important thing at all points and all times during the hockey season. Yeah. 7.35 puck drop. Mike, thanks for coming on. Good luck to you. I appreciate it. Michael Marsh is on having himself a good game. Let's take a quick look at some of the scores from around the FPHL. 5-1, a common number, not just here in Elmira, but around the Fed. Carolina has that lead over Port here on at McMoran Arena, where the Hattricks just finished off their regular season. Binghamton has that advantage over the Watertown Wolves in Watertown. So Binghamton looking to take a 1-0 lead. And Columbus has that lead over Motor City at home in Columbus. The River Dragons getting closer and closer to being the first team to clinch a postseason series win and a spot in the divisional final. Remember, they started off their postseason on Wednesday to alleviate some of the travel concerns going all the way from Fraser, Michigan down to Columbus, Georgia. That game is late in the third period, so we're getting towards the end and getting towards Columbus having one of the spots in the Continental Division Championship Series against what looks like right now Carolina will be in command of their Series 1-0 and Danbury has 20 minutes left to go in their first game. They'll be right back home tomorrow at 7 p.m. You'll be able to watch this game on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel live at home. And we are so grateful that you have decided to spend your evening with us. Let's take one more quick pause before we get back into the action for the third period. We'll see you in the third and final stanza of the opening game of the playoffs.
Third period about set to begin between the Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth. Danbury in command of this one, 5-1. They'll be defending the far end of the rink from our camera perspective, Elmira. And the home Purples will be defending the near side. These teams will continue their series tomorrow, 7 p.m. puck drop at the Danbury Ice Arena. Welcome on board for the final stanza of regulation time. I'm Chris Lynch, the hat tricks up 5-1. They piled up four goals through the duration of the first period, two of them coming in the very last minute of that period. Three points each for Michael Marchesson, Lucas DiBenedet, and Jacob Radcliffe. That line has been a terror, offensively speaking, from the, and from the Mammoth's perspective. Johnny Ruiz with a solo goal of his own that currently stands as what would be the game-winning goal in the event that, that, score, that this score holds. If the Mammoth don't get another goal, which is Brian Wilson's job. He has stopped 17 of 18 shots. The clock is set. Danbury shuffling up their lines a little bit. Or at least it looks like they are. They have Ojik, McKittrick, and Benell waiting to hop on to take the opening setup, but we'll wait and see how that actually ends up working itself out. 5-1 the score in Danbury's favor. Benell having a chat, and that's some of his teammates. Harley White goes back in between the pipes. Proudlock started in goal, took the whole first period, and White took the second. Danbury and Elmira have played 10 times previously throughout the course of regular season. They are in command of this one, trying to make it 11-4-11. And they aim for the series sweep tomorrow if they can hold on and secure a victory here tonight. Ruiz and Richards. It's no actual change for the lines. Just the conversation in between the period before we started the play. McKittrick and Benell flank Ruiz on the left and right respectively. Here we go. The puck is dropped. We're underway for the third and final period of regulation time. McDonald overruns it. Noah Wild fans on the shot. He'll put it on his backhand. Left up for McKittrick at the wall in front of the bench. Glides in, drops the pass up to Benell at the circle. Lost it. White will just stick it away. Tristan mocked. And Noah Wild will combine to settle it. Wild will hold it behind his own net. Waits for Richards to come and get it. And he'll work it up the wing. Richards. Has some space, cuts his way across the red line. Now the blue taken down, spun down by Jared Yao. And the Hattricks take their first penalty of the third, all of 45 seconds in to the stanza. Not the way you want to start a third period. They've been perfect on the penalty kill. They'll have to do that again and continue being perfect. A hooking minor against Jared Yao. He doesn't agree with it, but the officials rule it as such. Golo will take the face off. Elmira 0 for 3. Two of those being shorter power plays, and one of them being close to four minutes with two separate minors, including a five on three stretch in the middle of their third one, trying to avoid going 0 for 4. Here we go. Off to the blue line, off for Campbell. To the right circle. Tries to wrap it around in tight. Not there. Shot on, knocked down. Marcia Son. Can't play it, Mammoth still with it. Up top for Campbell, holds it, and put it down to the circle. Making the announcements in arena, shot on, save made, puck bounces wide. Golo, couldn't put it cleanly on net, De Benedette leaves it for Marchesson, he'll sprint in to the offensive end. Marchesson drags through, couldn't get it through. Dalton Anderson, Jelenskis will grab it and run. A minute and 15 left to go on the power play. Gets through a diving Gonzalez. Runs into the wall and brings it round to try and play it to the point. It's settled by Gullo, the captain of the Mammoth. Gathered and held up at the circle. Looking for some room to work with. One minute on the dot left to go on the power play. Gullo 
the top of the line for Ford. Winds up shot, blocked down by Riley Robertson before it ever got on net. Ruiz sticks, snaps. Ruiz calls for another one. No, he'll head off. Right decision to just hop off and go for a clean line change. No chance for a breakaway. Ford will settle it in his own end. Needs some help from Mock. We'll leave it behind for Richards. The two former hat tricks. Richards, across the blue line. Richards, Ole's Xavier Abdella. Puck free. Sheehan and Sanchez collide at the circle. Ford calling for it. They'll go behind the net. On top, Sanchez winds up, fakes the shot now, takes it. Save made by Wilson. Flutters into the corner. Ford will get it at the blue line. Works this round the boards. Final 10 seconds of the power play for Elmira. Still looking for a goal. They'll have to keep waiting as Wilson makes the stop with four seconds left to go on the power play. 2.41 into the third. Danbury in command, 5-1. Here in game one of their opening round series. Looking to move on to the Empire Division final, which would be next week. Danbury has home ice advantage for the duration of the postseason. Waiting to see how the format for the Commissioner's Cup finals works out. Yao's penalty is done. Chris Marate will settle it behind his own net and look for a breakout opportunity. Marate with the pass up to the blue line. Soilis holds it, glides in. Checked out by Pamaleon. Gets across the blue line, not without considerable effort. Work, puck worked off his stick. Oganejov works on for Gullo. Marate calling for it. Gullo will get it to him. Shot looking for the tip. It's knocked a bit too high. And they get one to go. The Mammoth get a goal back. It's 5-2. 3.15 in, 0 for on the power play. They get one. Ricard Delenskis goes ahead and finishes off a loose puck play in front. They couldn't get to the rebound in time. Bounced it off of Brian Wilson's shoulder. It's a good finisher. And a 5-2 advantage now. The Mammoth not out of it yet. There's a lot of time up on that clock. They have dominated the shot counter in the early going. Bennell will get on the loose puck at the blue line. The hat tricks looking to get that back. Brilliant move by Bennell. Save made. Rebound loose. Falanga couldn't get on it. And on it. They'll ring it in. Stavros Soilis. That's one of the assists. Nick Gullo gets an assist as well. On the goal at 3.15 into the third period to make it 5-2. This is going to be a textbook icing call against Elmira. Already a lot of action. A little under four minutes into the third period. Danbury and Elmira battling for control of the series. Elmira got the first goal of the game a minute nine in. Sanchez did that. Danbury controlled the remainder of the first period with four goals, two of them coming in the very last minute of the opening stanza. One goal in which the Hattricks controlled the pace and kept the flow of time moving pretty well. And now one goal for Elmira here in the third. Puck is down. Sheehan controls it in the corner, wants to free it for Ojek. Gets crunched by Jensen. Sheehan on a loose puck. Tried to throw it up to Ojik, who got held up. McGuire will glide it over the blue line. Dips around Jared Yao, nearly off sides. Good hold up to prevent any further opportunities for and off sides by Gino D'Angelo. Kuznetsov lost it. McDonald will grab it at the circle. Looks for an outlet. McDonald, long pass ahead. This is going to be an icing call, and that's a very, very easy call. Pass too far ahead for Ojek. Four thirty-eight gone by here in the third. The scoring on that goal for Elmira is as follows. Lenskis, the tally. 
The assist belonging, secondary assist belonging to Nick Gullo, the recently minted captain of the Elmira Mammoth just before we got into the meat of the playoffs. And Stavros Soilis got the primary assist. That goal 315 into the third period. Three players on the hat tricks with three points each. Danbury ices the puck. I'll be curious to hear what head coach Billy McCreary has to say about icing the puck in that type of situation. Sheehan dueling with Richards. Clean faceoff win. Sanchez, the shot wide to the left. They scored on a very similar play in the first period, a minute nine in. Give themselves at the time a 1 0 lead. Puck worked out to neutralize. Sheehan gliding in, drops the pass for Kuznetsov, across for Robertson, scores! Riley Robertson, and then we get a follow-up fight afterwards. Wild and McDonald right against the glass, and Richards holding up Kuznetsov, trying to keep him from getting into the middle of the fray. As it is, the Hattricks have scored to make it 6-2. Riley Robertson played 28 games in the regular season for the Hattricks, did not score a goal. He only had one assist, and Robertson has piled up two points this evening. Doubling his season total in one night. And that one night happens to be game one of the playoffs. Quite the time for the big man from Port Elgin, Ontario to find his scoring touch. Noah Wild has gone over to the penalty box, so this looks to be a bit of a complicated penalty situation. Wild will sit down. I'm not sure if they're gonna put anyone from the hat tricks in the box. They haven't opened the doors, so it doesn't look like it. it looks like we'll just have a simple hat tricks power play to add insult to injury. Actually, Billy McCreary is gonna swap his unit on the ice. They also haven't put Robertson's goal up on the scoreboard yet, so. I'm sure they're working out the scoring situation on that. Yep, now they have. It's now officially up on the scoreboard here, 6-2. Robertson the goal. Again, two points for the big, imposing defenseman. No more for defensive responsibility and mature, intelligent play rather than you know, what you would expect out of a player of his type, which is big, hard, heavy hits. And no more for that than he is for his scoring prowess. Only one point in the regular season, two in game one of the playoffs. Quite the time to pick it up. And now the hat tricks. Look to try and solve the other problem that has bedeviled them for much of the season, the power play. Second worst in the league. Radcliffe tumbles down. McGuire tried to get the takeaway. Puck still loose in the slot. Sheehan can't control it. Bunnell does. And after a near disaster, the hat tricks will avert their problems. Bunnell glide his way in. Thrown across. Ojek will settle it and work it low for Sheehan. Sheehan up top for Tobias Ojek. Ojek screens, one hand on his stick, hands off for Sheehan at the circle, slaloms through. Bunnell hands off to Sheehan at the top, drags it up to the slot, Radcliffe the shot, sailed a little bit high, a little bit wide. Sheehan with a whack at it, low for DeBenedet. A very good game for the International Falls Minnesota native. Radcliffe will step in, hands it off for Sheehan. Two guys right on the same spot. Sheehan goes down, Anderson will ring it out Hat tricks have lost a minute and five seconds worth of power play time. They'll get the other unit on. Gonzalez will fish it out from his own end and run with it. Gonzalez hands off. McKittrick gets himself free. McKittrick in. Kick save made by Harley White. Great, great save by White to keep them off the board on the power play. Jensen will come over and finish the clear and get it behind Wilson's net. 27 seconds left of power play time. Gonzalez at the circle. He'll leave it behind him for Zach Pamaleon. 
It's floated between the blue line and the forward core, has Pamela on. Ruiz glides in, wants the wrap around, the shot save made by White. McKittrick will come over and play it. 10 seconds left on the power play. Marsh is on, two goals for him. Ford overruns it. D'Angelo, they tried to play it up top, did McKittrick. Marshasson will knock it down. Hattricks, 0 for 3 on the power play. Marshasson up top for Sheehan, turn shot blocked. That's a good brave block by Ford. Sheehan still muscling, takes the checks from two guys. Robertson turns, fires, save made, puck free. White couldn't get a glove on it. Puck's still bouncing. Jensen can't get the clear. Marshasson and Sheehan combined to keep it in the attacking end. Sheehan will work it up to Kuznetsov. Turns, fires into White's mitt. He finally makes the stop. And we'll take a breather from media timeout. 12.30 to go in the third. Quick pause back in a moment from First Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Dr. Matt Hartsburg is an official member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard, right here in Danbury. Check out Hartsburg Chiropractic and get on the road to a pain-free hockey season. Myra honoring some of the military veterans who have been such a wonderful contribution and service to our country. A little bit earlier on during the first intermission, welcomed and honored brave soldiers who are going into the Army as new recruits. First Arena gives them a good hand and a good ovation. There's a couple of uniformed members of the United States Army in attendance here this evening. 12.30. The time remaining here in the third period. Danbury and Elmira with a goal each. 6-2 the score in favor of the hat tricks. Langa seeing some more playing time. Yao with the keep. Up for Kuznetsov. Shot sails it over the glass and bangs it onto the apron of the goal where it sits. Marate and Falanga jump on top of it. Coach McCurry willing to throw his lines in a blender. Johnny Ruiz out there to start off out of the media timeout on the faceoff dot with Michael Falanga and Dmitry Kuznetsov skating the extra forward, a second line winger, and first line center. And he's more than willing at this point with a 6 2 game to get a bit experimental with his lineups. De Benedet wins the draw to Radcliffe. Shot looking for the tip. It bounces its way wide. Radcliffe can't get the keep. Abdella can. Hands off, Marchesson looks for the shot, save made. Marchesson couldn't quite finish it off. Gonzalez with the keep at the blue line and the Hattrick's offense keeps humming along. Radcliffe wins it from Oganejov. De Benedet at the circle, slaloms through. De Benedet hands off to Radcliffe at the circle, looks for some room to work with, goes back to the point for Xavier Abdella. Dances his way free, Radcliffe pirouettes, falls down, still puck in his possession. And Brian Wilson will head off for the extra attacker. Elmira has taken a penalty. Abdella with a little shove and having to do all he can to not take an additional penalty is Marchesson. Is he just taking an additional one? I believe he may have. The officials, no, they're just trying to keep Michael Marchesson away from going towards the Elmira bench to have more words with the Mammoth. It's Luke Richards who's heading off to the box and the fans here at First Arena, do not agree with the officials, but c'est la vie, that is the ruling. So the hat tricks will get another chance on the power play. 11.40 to go in the third period. 6-2, the advantage for the visitors. Anderson and Sheehan on the dot. Ojek and McGuire jostling away from the immediate faceoff. Draw down, De Benedet wins it up for Radcliffe. He'll ring this low, Ojek. Holds turned, wanted to fire it, couldn't put it on net. 
Buck bounces to the circle, chance for a two on one for Elmira. Ford up the wing to the circle, across. Radcliffe knocks it down, couldn't connect with Anderson. And a good shorthanded breakup. Sheehan, cross for DeBenedet. And against the Elmira College sign, Radcliffe will hold it. Plays it cross for Benell. Benell winds up, plays it low, wants it back from DeBenedet. Hands off for Radcliffe at the point. Benell is free. DeBenedet with him. Turns, fire, shot, save, made off the pads of Harley White and cleared the length of the ice. Jacob Radcliffe goes to get it. McGuire stride for stride with him. Ruiz off the bench, picks up the loose puck, turns at the circle. 10.42 the time remaining, one minute of power play time for the Hattricks. They are 0 for 3 so far, trying to avoid going 0 for 4 as Elmira has. They've just scored as well, so trying to keep their momentum going. Ruiz across, Gonzalez will play it back up for Ruiz. Turns, fire shot, blocked down, and almost trickles through just a little bit wide of the post. Chris Marate will glide this out, the Mammoth, a bit fortunate. They haven't given up a power play goal right here. <laughs> Ruiz holds it in the corner, works up for Gonzalez at the point. Ruiz. Looks, turns, down low for McKittrick. Wanted it for Pamela on couldn't quite connect with it. D'Angelo with a stick in the right place. Ruiz, the blast. White, the stop. And both teams are over on the power play. Marcia Son will funnel this in. Sheehan takes a whack at it. Jensen can't go anywhere with it. D'Angelo across the red line. Knocked down. Schmidt, the enforcers on this team, can't go anywhere with it. Belanga flies. Hands off Sheehan. The shot sails it up. McDonald turns and fires. White with the stop. Belanga tried to get back to the puck behind him and blows a tire. Gets fortunate the puck stays at his feet. Ford will carry this out from the slot. Ford for Schmidt. 8.42 the time remaining. 6-2 the score. Robertson the check. 8.35 left to go. Puck will sit. Glides up from the circle. Kuznetsov dances. Kuznetsov handles beautifully. Top of the circle. Shot kicked wide. Marshall's on using all six foot five. This is going to be a penalty. Going against Marcia Son for a high stick. That'll bring us to the under 10 media timeout. We'll take a pause and come back. On the final 8.15 of the third here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. We're going to follow Marcia Son into the box. Both boxes are open. Marcia Son continues with his conversation, but it's going to be a penalty against him. Accidentally went into the wrong box. Now we'll take our breather, come back in just a moment from First Arena here in Elmira, New York. It's the spirit of hard work. The Batchers of Litchfield Distillery in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks. Michael Marchesson took a high sticking penalty just before the immediate timeout, so the hat tricks 
the fifth time tonight are shorthanded. They have been perfect in penalty kill situations. They have to be again. Trying to keep it at a 60 margin. Shot tipped up too high. Bangs into the protective netting overhead. That burns all of nine seconds off the power play. Brian Wilson, the co-goalie of the year in the FPHL, has stopped 22 of 24 shots. Danbury has piled up 37 shots on the two Mammoth goaltenders. They've gotten two goals against Harley White, one in the second and one in the third. They got four goals against Thomas Proudlock. Patrick's lead the league in shorthanded goals as the Mammoth try to set up. Puck tied up at the faceoff dot. Knocked down by Campbell. Worked to the wing. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Drags in, turns, fires. Blocker save made by Wilson. And cleared out to the wall by Xavier Abdella. Harley White comes well out of his crease for the long pass ahead. This is going to be an icing play off the pass by the goalie. A poor decision there by White. So we'll get a faceoff in Mammoth Ice. Game two of the series will be tomorrow. 7 p.m. puck drop at the Danbury Ice Arena. You'll be able to see it live on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Lucas DiBenedet takes the face off against Nick Gullo. Wins the draw up to Robertson. He'll work it low for DiBenedet. Hattricks trying to get some shorthanded time down here. DiBenedet took the puck away from Campbell. We'll take the puck for a walk. Give it back to Yao in Hattrick defensive ice. Pass forward for Radcliffe. White out of his net. Tries the backhand pass. Has no energy on it. Radcliffe got to the loose puck. Radcliffe and DeBenedette playing an excellent game at all stages. Three points each. A goal each. Two assists each. And they've both been incredibly defensive, res defensively responsible. That'll bang off the boards. Hattricks only have 35 more seconds of penalty time left to kill. Stephen Ford holds it against the wall at his own end of the rink and will glide it up. Ford at the wall, glides in. Mock, try and fish this up. Gullo, the first man to it. Hands off for Mock, works it up top to the point. Ford turns at the circle, fake the shot. Ford holds it off to Richards on the right side, top of the circle. Swab spots. Wilson handcuffed by the shot, but he still makes it. With 6.24 left, only nine seconds of penalty time left to kill for the hat tricks. Danbury looking to claim their 11th victory over the Mammoth. They've won all of the regular season matchups. Bell behind 1-0 as the Mammoth fumble possession over their own blue line. Falanga harassing Ford. They continue the tie-up, even though the puck has come free. The officials let it go. Sanchez, one of the goal scorers for Elmira, can't get it across the blue line. Across for Falanga. He'll gain the puck at the offensive blue line. Flings it across. Stick there. Shot save made on Kuznetsov's pinching in attempt. White with a couple of good stops on a scramble play. For the Hattricks had some good shorthanded chances. The penalty has now expired, so we're back to even strength. Falanga controls it in his own corner. Puck bounces up to the circle, turns, fires. Jelenskis couldn't get the shot away. He's got another goal as well. has been a problem for Danbury this season. Dragged through. Kuznetsov will play it over to Tobias Ojik. Plays and handles it. Low for Sheehan. Oganezhov will settle it at his own end. Sheehan diving in. Pass up to Ojik at the crease. Couldn't control it. Ojik has taken a ton of punishment tonight. Will ring it low for Sheehan. 5.21 left to go in the third period. Hattricks in the lead, 6-2. Turns up to the top of the slot, and Sheehan didn't have anyone to throw it to. Nick Gullo was the only guy there for it, and he wears a purple jersey, not a white one tonight. Zach Pamaleon settles it in his own end. Puck forward for Kuznetsov. On for Ojik. One guy to get behind. Ojik will turn and drag and wait for reinforcements. Low and beyond Benel. Kuznetsov will work it up to Abdella at the point. It didn't have a lot on the pass, and Jelenskis will pick it up. At the blue line, hands it off, wanted Sanchez, it's too far ahead of him. He has to avoid Pamela Leon's hit, and the Mammoth actually do play it up to the point. Ford holds it, look, turns for the shot, blocked down by Ruiz before it ever had a chance of coming on. Here comes Gordy Bennell, he'll carry it up, rings it off the boards, he'll just hop off for a simple line change. 
Noah Wild leaves it for Luke Richards to carry out. The Mammoth trying to get themselves back into this game, but running out of time and running out of steam. Six to the advantage for the visiting hat tricks. Wild off to his left for Ford. Again, game two of the series tomorrow. Hat tricks trying to close out this game, go up one nothing, and trying to end the series victoriously. They've only been in existence since 2019, won their first playoff series last year. They're looking for more in the statement game as DeBenedette will pull up, leave it low for Marchesson. Pass up top, shot scores! Jacob Radcliffe, a four point game for number 44, and the New Zealand man has put the hat tricks up seven to two. You can hear the bells, you can hear the hat tricks fans enjoying themselves in Elmira as some of the Mammoth fans start to head for the exit. 7-2 the score with 3.51 left to go in the third period. Danbury trying to sew up a victory. Off the tie-up, Mammoth will come away with it and work this deep. We're coming up towards the final media timeout of the game. Next pause that isn't a goal will be that. Turns, fires Wilson with the stop. Scrambling play. He'll get his glove on top of it. And the whistle finally sounds. We get a little bit of a tie-up afterwards. Falanga in the middle of it, as he has for a bit of this period, actually. The officials doing some work to separate everybody from the mess. Wilson down on his side, rolls over onto his front. That'll take us to the under five media timeout. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment from first to Reno with the final stretch of the game here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're gonna have a fight at center. Oh, oh, Beck with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! You want the best milkshake you ever had? You want to taste greatness? Well, hit the Holiday Diner on White Street and feast off their menu. It's breakfast, lunch, and dinner with George and the crew. Check them out on White Street at the Holiday Diner. Remember, Hat Tricks fans made the trip up from Danbury. On Regal among them, super fans. The Frankel family, Gigante made the trip up. The Danbury Hat Tricks and their crew, Joe Trench, here in the building. The Danbury Hat Tricks and their fans enjoying themselves. Seven to the margin in favor of the visitors. Hattrick's looking to close this game out and take the show back home to the Danbury Ice Arena, where if needed, they would play two games on home ice. Seven to the margin here, Jacob Radcliffe, the pretty clear number one star of the game. Four points for the New Zealand man, two of them goals. Puck left for Schmidt to go and get. Brings it across the crease for nobody to be able to punch it home. Jensen the shot, blocked before it got on net. Campbell controls it at the circle, looks to play this on. Puck will trickle across the open crease. Turns and fires, Jensen couldn't do much of anything with it. 2.40 left to go here in the third. Seven to the margin. Puck free, Campbell winds up, blasts it. Saved by Wilson, turns, fires, Wilson will swallow it up. And Brian Wilson has made 26 saves on the Elmira Mammoth tonight. Two twenty-seven. the time remaining here in the third. The hat tricks have command. These teams played 10 times during the course of the regular season. Danbury won all 10 of them. They're on the verge of winning their 11th. Up seven to two in the final 225 of the game. Time trickling down. Wilson will settle it left behind his goal. Yao wings through, Bunnell will get this up and out. This is gonna turn into an icing. 
And a pretty easy one at that. Danbury was denied a spot in the postseason in the 1920 season because there was no postseason. The coronavirus pandemic hit. And as a result, the playoffs were not allowed to happen at all. And a number of people from that 1920 team feel that had they been allowed to finish out their season and compete for a championship, that they would have either won it outright or given the Carolina Thunderbirds quite a fight. They didn't take part in the 2021 season on COVID hiatus. They came back for the 21-22 season, won a playoff series against Binghamton, fell in the second round to the Columbus River Dragons. And now presently, they sit one minute and 40 seconds away from getting their first playoff victory of a series over the Elmira Mammoth in their first year of existence. Not to say that pro hockey is new to Elmira. Whistle sounds for an icing, so we'll get a face off all the way back at defensive ice for Danbury. The UHL, the ECHL, called this place home before the FPHL came into existence with originally the Elmira Enforcers. And now here we have the Mammoth. A minute 27 left to go. 7-2 the score in favor of Danbury. Shots are 39 to 28. Turning shot save made, another chance on. Wilson snuffs this out, dives to try and cover it. Puck is still loose. Marsha Son will flick this down to the opposite end of the rink. It's a rolling puck that does have enough legs to turn into an icing. One minute, 12 seconds remain to be played in regulation time. Danbury heading home. Immediately after the game, they'll have their regular game day routine. You better believe the Danbury Ice Arena is gonna be rocking. Players head back to the bench. Danbury calls for time right here with the Face off about to be in their own end of the rink. I want to thank Patrick Burnett and Calvin Savoya for coming up and making the trip with me and getting us on the air and making all of this happen. Challenging circumstances whenever you come on the road and I'm grateful for these two guys for being with me and being able to make this all a reality. We're grateful for the Danbury Hatricks for providing a good product and good hockey to be able to enjoy and present to all of you the Danbury Hattricks fan base. One minute, 12 seconds left to go here in the third period. 7-2 in favor of the Hattricks. Draw is down up to the top and we get my least favorite thing in hockey, a fake face off. The officials, I guess, weren't ready or there was something that happened afterwards. It actually benefits the hat tricks. They get to change their, nope, they don't get to change their players yet. Officially on record, the puck was not actually dropped. So the same guys who were on the ice for the icing have to stay out there. So they can't bring De Benedette, Abdella, or Radcliffe on. This just feels a little bit silly with the score at 7-2, but oh well. Robertson will hold it at the goal line extended. Pamela Leon will chip it on for Marcia Song. Glides in, Marcia Song drops it. Kuznetsov in tight. White with the save off the tip shot by Marcia Song, who was looking for the hat trick. Would have been his second straight game against the Mammoth, scoring three goals. He put up four, actually, in the regular season finale at home. Fifty-four point three seconds left to go. Anderson and Benedette will duel one more time. Buck one up to the blue line, looking for the tip. It's a little bit wide. The stick side of White. Marsha Son will glide his way in. Marsha Son throws it up top, bouncing puck off of Dino D'Angelo. Oganejov looking for the outlet. Had D'Angelo bounces underneath Jensen. 
And rolls to the apron of the goal. The Mammoth will look for a better result and better effort tomorrow as they will hit the road and go into season extension mode. Our teams play their most desperate hockey. It can alternately be their very best or their very worst as things can come undone, but also you can play your very best hockey when down and backed into a corner as Elmira is going to be tomorrow. And Billy McCreary gonna be sure to prepare his unit for a desperate Mammoth team who don't want their season to come to a conclusion. Clean face-off win for Elmira. The clock has not stopped. The clock is not running, now it is. We'll add a couple more seconds onto the clock. Radcliffe will carry it up. Slide his way in, Radcliffe will spin and hold it, burn time down. Ojik will throw it towards the net. The final seconds burn off, and that is that. The Danbury Hattricks come into first arena and earn a 7-2 victory, thwomping the Mammoth and taking a one game to zero lead over the Mammoth. The Hat Tricks will look to close the series out tomorrow. 7 p.m. puck drop at the Danbury Ice Arena. You'll be able to watch game two of the opening round playoff series and spend it with us at the Danbury Ice Arena tomorrow night. That's it for everybody with the Danbury Hat Tricks. I'm Chris Lynch. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us. Be warm, be well. We'll see you in Danbury with a chance for the Hattricks to win a playoff series tomorrow night.